Yeah, but Cody keeps telling me he doesn't have money. Cody's always been very creative in his financial situations. You know what I mean? When you've got a big family, sometimes you get in a situation where you need to rob Peter to pay Paul, right? Like, I get that. Like, everybody does that sometimes. I feel like everybody in the family has a different opinion about the other person, about what has been happening with the finances. And I don't know which of it is true. I'm not going to take sides. I'm not going to be in the ex-wives club. I'm not in the Cody and Robin club. Hi friends, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It is Monday, November 11th, 2024. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Mary Brown and Janelle Brown sat down to talk about money. And then Mary Brown saw Christine. Mary's reunion with both women was the first we've seen either one share the same time on camera in more than two seasons. The last time Mary was with Christine was the knife and the kidney scene in season 17. Mary has kept a very distant relationship from her ex-sister wives. And when Janelle went to go speak to Mary about possible problems with Coyote Pass and paying off the property, Mary was not vibing with what Janelle was saying. Mary did not believe that Cody and Robin would screw them over by taking all of the land. Mary believes that Cody will act like a gentleman and be fair. Interestingly, Mary also was under the belief that Janelle controlled the finances in the, in the family. Janelle admitted to being a bookkeeper, and she said that the way that Cody spent money, they would be in a much better financial position had she actually had any control or say in how the money was spent. Janelle was the accountant making sure that bills got paid, making sure that everything lined up. She helped with the taxes. Janelle knows where the money went. I know a lot of fans want them to get a forensic accountant, but Janelle was the accountant. Frankly, Janelle knows where the money is. She knows where Cody is spending money. She sees what Cody is spending the money on, and Janelle is keenly aware of the discrepancies with money. Mary is of the belief that Cody's behavior with money is normal. In fact, she went as far to say that it's totally normal for someone to rob Peter to pay Paul, especially in families their size. Cody's always been very creative in his financial situations. You know what I mean? When you've got a big family, sometimes you get in a situation where you need to rob Peter to pay Paul, right? Like, I get that. Like, everybody does that sometimes. Unfortunately for Mary Brown, she's been surrounded by people that just aren't good people most of her entire life. Most people don't engage in the illegal activities of polygamy, and certainly most men do not engage in having children, 18 that is, with four separate women and not and fathering all of these children while not being able to uh, pay for their kids. Most men aren't irresponsibly having more children than they can afford. Most families don't live in polygamy. Now, robbing Peter to pay Paul, that's it's an I it's a concept where you take out a loan or you take money from one person so that you can pay another. A lot of times when you pay attention to financial crimes and you talk about Ponzi schemes, they often refer to a Ponzi scheme as where you have one investor paying off another investor. So you get money from one investor and then you pay off the other investor and you make them think that they're getting big returns and you always need a new pool of investor money in order to keep paying off the people. It's a cycle that doesn't give you a good long-term financial security. And it's a really sad testament to what is normal for Mary. There are times in many people's lives where they will not have money to cover expenses. 
There will be times in many people's lives where they might need to get a loan in order to pay something else off. But robbing Peter to pay Paul in this context would suggest stealing money from one wife in order to pay another wife's bills. That's not fair, especially when the division of assets was never equitable and some wives' fee bills were getting paid more often than others. Cody was paying for surgeries for Robin's kids, paying Robin's mortgage, and paying off Robin's debts, but he wasn't doing the same for Christine and Janelle and Mary. In fact, Cody was robbing Mary, Janelle, and Christine in order for him to have his trophy wife and fund her lifestyle and fund his lifestyle. It's normal for Cody to be a con artist and scammer, but it's not actually normal behavior. And I just sometimes get sad at how naive Mary really is. And I, it's sad because she's in her 50s and she just thinks this is normal, which probably is why she thinks it's totally normal to be involved in LuLaRoe after the number of times this company has been sued and the amount of times that Deanne and the Stidhams have been, the owners have been accused of fraud. The number of women that have declared bankruptcy, the millions of dollars this company has had to pay out for fraud. She thinks it's normal. So she's prone to being around people that are not good people because it's what she's used to. And that's just sad to me, honestly. But there is more. I feel like everybody in the family has a different opinion about the other person, about what has been happening with the finances. And I don't know which of it is true. I'm not going to take sides. I'm not going to be in the ex-wives club. I'm not in the Cody and Robin club. I guess she just still thinks Cody's going to take care of her. I don't expect Cody to take care of me. But what I do expect is for him to be a gentleman. Janelle and I are entitled to some of the property as well. And I expect him to be fair with us. Before Janelle entered the house, she made a comment about how Mary is loyal to a fault, blind to Cody's manipulation, blind to his behavior, and just loyal and blindly believing that he will do what he says he's going to do. I'll actually show you the clip here in a minute. Sadly, she refers to Mary as a dog. And it made me sad because Janelle has in the last couple of episodes, referred to Robin as a sacred cow and Mary like a loyal dog. And I want to be clear, this is how women in this cult are treated. Women are called brood mares because they breed cows. They breed babies. Brood mares are cows that breed for a farmer. They are told when they are older that they will be put out to pasture I mean, they have leaders from the pulpit telling the men, just take the wife out like she's like you take an old cow out to the pasture and get rid of her. They refer to women as animals and they refer to women as dogs and the loyalty and they value loyalty like a dog would be loyal to a master, submitting and obeying no matter what they do. And it's just truly sad that this kind of objectification is happening and this kind of dialogue happens. And I'm sure that Janelle doesn't mean it, but she says it, and that makes me sad. And I know some people don't think that calling Robin a sacred cow is actually calling her a cow. But in truth, a sacred cow would mean that somebody is above reproach and above criticism. It is something that you're worshiping above all else. You can use words without being demeaning and calling something a cow. And knowing that the cult uses the cow as a reference to women, that's why I bristle when she says that. Same with the things where she says about dogs. And for Mary being this blindly loyal to Cody and obedient because she's been trained since birth to be this way doesn't surprise me. Mary, to this day, has a very rose-colored image of her father, a man that I have been told scared a lot of people. I am friends with a girl, uh, with a young woman who was in the Apostolic United Brethren, she went to school with Mary. She was actually friends with one of Mary's sister. For a period of time, she was in school and Mary's dad was the principal. And she was terrified of Mary's father. Mary's father had a reputation for being violent with his wives and with his children and being very strict and disciplinary at school. This woman has told me about doing anything she could to not have to deal with Mary's father. They have. She has told me about how 
that level of cruelty by Mary's father became ingrained in his daughters and the the girls being very at times mean to people because of the abuse in their own home. Mary has been conditioned to accept abuse and she just is so conditioned to being abused and Cody has abused her and then she has repeated the cycle and abused. Maddie Brown Brush has a new podcast and on an episode of her new podcast she spoke about her relationship with Mary and in no uncertain terms she said that Mary was having a conversation with her as an adult and told her you're not in trouble and was treating her like a child and she responded by saying she knew she wasn't in trouble and what was Mary going to do spank her and throw her in her room Mary was the physical aggressor. She was the disciplinarian. She was abusing the kids for Cody to keep them in line. And Maddie likened what Mary did to her as what people in the circus do to baby elephants, where they just beat on the baby elephants when they're babies so that when they become large and too big to control, that they will be so scared of their trainer that they won't try to hurt people. She it's like she was talking about breaking, being having her will broken by Mary. They try and punish you. Yeah. Like, and it's, I remember I had a conversation with um, Mary and she, one of my parents and she was like, don't worry, you're not in trouble. And I was like, I am an adult, A, B, I'm married. C, I have children. I don't get in trouble. Yeah. What are you going to, what are you going to do? Just make me and put me in my room. Yeah. Um, When they have a baby elephant, they beat the baby elephant. This circus used to do this. I don't know if they do it now. So somebody's going to fact check me. But they used to beat the baby elephant so that when it was big and large and big enough to hurt somebody, it was scared. Isn't that so sad? But you see that a lot in toxic families, in toxic relationships. It's like, well, it's the way that it happens. Um, Maddie is one of many children in this family that has spoken about violence in their home. And the violence that is experienced in these subcultures of polygamy. And comparing her experience of getting disciplined as a child to a baby elephant getting beat so that they wouldn't be scared, they'd be too scared when they're big. It's really sad. I know a lot of people will excuse the behavior of Mary and they will say that she was only doing what Cody told her to do and she had to do it. But that's just not true. Sure, she might have caught hell for it, but Mary did it because it was what she saw in her own home and it was what was accepted in this cult. It is acceptable to beat your children in polygamy. And that's why there are the negative stereotypes of child abuse. Not only just child brides, but child abuse. There are too many children. There are women that are angry with their sister wives and they take it out on their sister wives' children. Children are innocent victims, and it's not normal. And Maddie's podcast is actually a lot different than McKelty, who talks about her family. She and her friend and this podcast talk more about what it's... This whole episode was about establishing boundaries and making boundaries with people and going no contact and, and why you would go no contact. She spoke great at great length about her non-contact with her father and why she's no contact with Cody, and because he lies about her, because he makes, he won't listen to her, he yells at her, he tries to tell her her experiences did not happen, he spreads rumors about her, he's not a safe person, he demands that everyone do whatever he wants, and there's no wiggle room. And when you grow up like that, and then you have to have all these other moms in your business. It's going to make you messed up. But Maddie isn't talking about this for the sake of spilling tea. I think she's doing this because she wants to share her experience while also helping others not maybe fall into the same traps or realize that what they did experience wasn't normal. One thing that she said about her parents, and I'm going to say this because most people discredit McKelty and they say that she's a liar or they'll say Peyton is a liar. Well, Maddie, who everyone loves, is on this podcast saying, my parents surrounded me by 
people that were really bad people. We were exposed to people that were not good people, people that were going to exploit us, people that were involved in bad activities. She said nothing twisted, meaning nothing like I'm sure Warren Jeffs, but people that were not of good moral character, not upstanding citizens. The entire culture that she grew up in is led by men that are exploiting their flock. And so many children in this cult are beat. And the amount of sexual abuse in just the AUB is astronomical. And I hope that through this podcast, Maddie's voice is heard and it's given credibility because if these children have experienced abuse, they should be able to speak that without fear of the ramifications of what could happen to their parents being on a show. It's almost like Janelle says, my kids are totally well-adjusted kids. And Maddie says, my childhood was really freaking weird. And the people that my mom surrounded me around were not good people. Maddie's saying, I'm not a well-adjusted person. I survived. And now I have to figure out how to like undo things that I've learned. I mean, she literally talks about in this podcast about how family members don't want her to spank, want her to spank her children. Family members. They get in fights with her about wanting, they want her to spank her kids. It just it makes me sad. So Mary being loyal to Cody and being loyal to him and believing that he's going to pay her and be fair to her and think he's a gentleman. I mean, this is the same Mary that probably thinks her dad is a gentleman. And it's the same Mary that told Christine that she's not necessarily happy on the other side. Yes, you know. <laughs> Yeah, right? Yeah. It's better on the other side, isn't it? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. It will be. It, it's... Thank you. <laughs> I like my side, but there's also... There's also things. You love you know? Yeah, right? Yeah. This moment between the two of them was probably the rawest and realest I've ever seen Christine be because it actually reminds me of her aunt Kristen Decker, who, when she left, she left a family and she was the only one that left. And she wanted and had a heart for those that left and wanted them to know that it's okay on the other side. And Christine and Kristen haven't spoken. I don't know that that will ever get mended, but there have been a lot of people in these women's lives that have been trying to reach them in a way where they would say, like, it's it's better. Life is better on the other side of this. You don't have to stay there. And Mary, with Christine, face to face, was tearful and crying and said, I love you. And to me, what that felt like is it's two women that survived a horrible life that were forced to do and put up with horrible behavior. We're both subject to horrific abuse, whose children were subject to abuse. And Christine is the most out of this cult. She is 100% out. She doesn't believe it. She doesn't want anyone to live it. She doesn't think it's good for people. She thinks it's a horrible way to live. She had to make do with what she had at the time. And she says, I, my life wasn't a failure. It wasn't a failure. And a lot of this with them not being able to accept it is what it is, is because their whole cult is built on being perfect. And admitting to failure means you've failed God and you've failed your mission. And that's a heavy burden. And then there's the fear of damnation that comes with leaving and that you're a wicked, evil person that's left. And that's a hard place for people to come to grips with. And it's hard for people to come out of that. And Mary says, well, I this has just only been a couple months for me. I'm not ready for this conversation. I mean, with face to face with Christine, she was vulnerable and crying in her talking head. She was basically like, I'm not going to trust Christine. I'm not going to feel like I can be safe with her. I'm, I'm not going to have this conversation with her. That's how Mary has had to survive with that tough exterior in order to cope with the abuse and to also cope with what she's been 
and has done to other people. It's a whole system of abuse. I'm actually encouraged the more I watch of Christine, and I feel like she is in many ways trying to right the wrongs of what she did and promoted. I mean, when she left Cody, she said one of her biggest fears was that people would think she was a fraud because she had promoted polygamy for so long and now she left. And she didn't want people to think she was a fraud. And I think she left so that she didn't have to lie anymore. And that's very brave. And I hope that Mary gets there too. But I think the only way that these women can recover and the kids can recover if there's real honesty about what's happening in this family, not sugar-coated and sanitized by TLC. And I'm sad that Mary at this point, which was, you know, spring 2023, was still under the fog of Cody Brown. I hope that she is more away from him because he's not a good person and he's not a gentleman and he will rip her off. And she proved that he is a scam artist by what she said. So if you want to check out Maddie's podcast, I'll link it in the description post. It's called The Authentic Society. And her new episode is called The Boundary Blueprint. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed. And click the bell so you never miss a video. Bye, everyone.